In this video, we're going to talk about how to integrate Stackhawk with Jenkins. A good percentage of us today are probably developing websites or APIs, or maybe even a combination of both. However, how many of us are actually scanning our applications while they are running to find vulnerabilities? In this video, we're going to be using Stackhawk within our Jenkins file to try to help us find any problems within our application. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins controller version 2.289.3. And attached to this controller, I have an agent. And on that agent, we have Docker running. We also have a sample application that has all of the code that we're using today. The link to this repository is down in the description of this video. To begin with, let's start with the Stackhawk website. The first thing that we're going to do is we would typically create an account. So if we click on Create Account, then what's going to happen is you'll go through a sign-up process. Now, for me, I already have an account set up, and I'm using the free developer account in this example today. So I'm going to click on Sign In, which will actually take me to this page, and I'm using my GitHub ID. So I'm going to log in with GitHub. And then we end up on this console. The first thing that we're going to need to do is create an API key. And the way we'll do that is we'll go down to my name. We'll go to settings. We will go to API keys. And we're going to create a new API key. Now, when you're setting up your account the first time, it will create an API key for you. So you may already have your API key when you went through and set up your account. But since I've already had an account set up, and I deleted old API keys. I'm just creating a new API key. So if you ever rotate your API keys, this is how you would do it. So creating a new API key, I'm just going to name it Jenkins. And then it gives you the full key here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And I'm going to save this over in my notes. OK, great, because we're going to need this key in just a few moments. That's pretty much all that we need to do inside of the Stackhawk application for right now. So let's go ahead and go over into our controller and let's create our credential. And the credential that we need today is a secret text. So we'll go over here to global, add credentials. I'm going to change this to a secret text. The secret is going to be the API key that we just created. So I'm going to go over to my notes and grab those. There they are. And let's go and take a look at the repository that we're using today. This is just a general repository. I have an index.json file. So what's going to happen is we're going to copy our index.json file over to a running Apache server that happens to be on the agent as well. Is that a best practice? Not even close. But at least it gives me the opportunity to deploy a file over to a running web server that we will then be running Stackhawk against. You'll also see here there's a Stackhawk YAML, which we'll take a look at in just a moment. But let's take a look at our Jenkins file, because we're in the process of creating our credential right now. And our API key is going to be using this credentials helper. And we're loading it into Stackhawk API key, all uppercase. But I need a lowercase here to put into our credential ID and description. Make sure I don't have a trailing. Yep, all that looks good. So let's click OK. Let's go back over here one more time. Let's just take a look at what's going to happen. We're copying our index.json file, which we just saw a moment ago, and we're putting it on the same server under var wwhtml. Again, I've already set up Apache on this server, so it will take this file and it will load up the file as the default index file. So instead of it being index.html, it's now index.json. Again, I've configured Apache to do that. Whether you're using Apache, whether you're using Nginx, maybe whatever it is that you might be using. Just set it up, do whatever you want to do here within this environment, then you're good to go. Let's take a look at our step where we're going to be integrating with Stackhawk. They provide, they being Stackhawk, provide a container image that we will pass in the API key to. We're going to pass in an environment variable called no color, and then we just run hawk scan off of that. And what's happening is that is going to be running the test, and it's looking for, by default, the Stackhawk YAML file. Now, there's other ways that you can pass in the data to this Hawk scan binary, 
but we're just going to go down and use the Stackhawk YAML file. Let's take a look at this. This is a very simplistic example pulled from the Stackhawk documentation. What I have here is an app section that has an application ID. The host that we're going to be testing against, this is the Apache server that's running on my agent. So I'm just giving it the IP address. And then you can set up different environments. Again, this is a Stackhawk implementation. I'll let you read up on what this environment really means. And then there's a couple of entries here for the Hawk binary itself. Again, you can take a look at the documentation and it will explain all of these pieces to you. Again, this is a simple example. If you want to look into more Stackhawk information, take a look at their documentation. So here's the one thing I do need to change. Let's go over to Applications. And I need to add an application. So I'm going to click on Add an App. I'm going to give it a name of the same as my repository because I'm just keeping it simple for right now. You can name it whatever you want. There's my name. The environment is going to be development. Again, they give you a couple of options here, pre-production, production, but we're staying with development. My host is going to be the HTTP section. So let me grab this information. Whoops, wrong one. There we go. And let's click Next. And then Finish, because the only thing I'm going to need from here before I click Finish, I need to copy this application ID. So if I go ahead and click Copy here, I'm going to trust it, but I'm going to go ahead and copy it manually anyway. So let's, before I actually click on Finish to close that out, let's go ahead and take a look at this, let's make a modification to our application ID. So there's the application ID. So this is just mapping back to Stackhawk. So when Hawkscan runs, it knows where to send the data so we can look at it in the console. Let's click on Commit Changes. 6A1, let's take a look at it. 6A1, yep, we'll go ahead and click on Finish. Great, so now this is all set up. Here's development, nothing's been run yet. So we're good to go there. So let's recap real quick. We created an API key inside of the Stackhawk UI. We took that API key, created a secret text credential inside of Jenkins. Then we went back to the Stackhawk UI and created an application there. So we have an application ID that we then put into our Stackhawk YAML file. Let's go ahead and go over to our controller and create a job. So let me back up to here. I need to go ahead and copy my URL, let's go here, new item, we will call this Stackhawk, and click Pipeline, click OK. And now let's go here, SEM, get, there we go, that's good. We are working on the main branch, and our Script path is Jenkins file. And now we've got that set up. Let's go and click on Save. And let's click on Build Now and see what happens. So Build Now, we'll look at Build 1. And here we go. We do our clone. We do our copy of index.json to our root of Apache. And now we're running our Docker run file. You can see here that Hawkscan is running. And as our Jenkins file finished running, we can go back and take a look at what's going on here. We had the scan engine running. It found our URLs, that's great. That's what we were expecting. It was uploading logs to the platform, which is the Stackhawk UI. And then here, it also gave us a couple of the errors that are here. Now, whether you consider this an error or not, it's at least a medium criticality. It's an HTTP-only site. That's true. I don't have an SSL certificate on there. And trace is active, which probably should be shut off. But again, we see all of this information right here within our job. We just saw what our console output looks like for the build. Let's take a look at what it looks like now within our UI. So we'll go into development. We see Jenkins example Stackhawk. 
And we can see here that we have three medium entries. Why should we be doing vulnerability scanning during our CI process? First off, we're able to find these errors before they even get to production. By doing that, that's going to save us both time and potentially money in remediation costs. And secondly, since we know it's running during our CI process, we are guaranteed that this step will be run every time our Jenkins file runs. What that means is that we're going to be able to get faster feedback to our application developers anytime a new problem is found. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBeesDevs. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.